In the 1960s, NASA started plans for the Mariner missions, which were designed to be the first U.S. spacecraft to other planets, specifically Venus and Mars. Of these missions, Mariner 3 and 4 were sent to Mars. At the Mariner 3 launch, a protective shield failed to eject after the spacecraft had passed through the atmosphere. None of the instrument sensors were covered, and the added weight prevented the spacecraft from attaining its Mars trajectory. Mariner 4 was the first spacecraft to get a close look at Mars. It revealed Mars to have cratered, rust-colored surface with signs on some parts of the planet that liquid water had once existed on the surface. The spacecraft had a television camera which took 22 television pictures covering about 1% of the planet. These pictures took four days to transmit to Earth. The Mariner 4 spacecraft consisted of an octagonal magnesium frame. Four solar panels were attached to the top of the frame with an end-to-end -end span of 688 centimeters, including the solar vanes. A high-gain parabolic antenna was mounted at the top of the frame, as well as an omnidirectional low-gain antenna. The overall height of the spacecraft was 289 centimeters. At the bottom center of the spacecraft, the television camera was mounted on a platform. The octagonal frame housed the electronic equipment, cabling, mid-course propulsion system, and the control gas supplies and regulators. Most of the science experiments were mounted on the outside of the frame, such as a magnetometer, dust detector, cosmic ray telescope, trapped radiation detector, solar plasma probe, and an ionization chamber. Telecommunications equipment consisted of a dual S-band 7W triode, a 10W TWTA transmitter, and a single receiver in which could send and receive data via the low and high-end antennas at 8 and 1 3rd or 33 and 1 3rd beeps per second. After launch, the protective shroud covering Mariner 4 was jettisoned and the Agena D slash Mariner 4 combination separated from the Atlas D booster on the 28th November 1964. The Agenda D first burn put the spacecraft into an Earth parking orbit and the second burn injected the craft into a Mars transfer orbit. Mariner 4 separated from the Agena D and began cruise mode operations. The solar panels deployed and the scan platform was unlatched, and SON acquisition occurred 16 minutes later. After seven and a half months of flight involving one mid-course maneuver on the 5th of December 1964, the spacecraft flew by Mars on July 14th and 15th, 1965. Planetary science mode was turned on on 14th of July. The camera sequence started on July 15th and 21 pictures plus 21 lines of a 20 second picture were taken. The images covered 1% of the planet's surface. The closest approach was 9,846 kilometers from the Martian surface. The images taken during the flyby were stored in an onboard tape recorder. At 219, Mariner 4 passed behind Mars as seen from Earth and the radio signal ceased. The signal was reacquired at 313 when the spacecraft reappeared. Cruise mode was then re-established. Transmission of the taped images to Earth began about eight and a half hours after the signal reacquisition and continued until the 3rd of August. All images were transmitted twice to ensure no data were missing or corrupt. The spacecraft performed all programmed activities successfully and returned useful data from launch until the 1st of October 1965, when the distance from Earth and the antenna orientation temporarily halted the signal acquisition. Contact was re-established on 3rd of May 1966, showing that the spacecraft and instruments were functioning. Full data acquisition resumed in late 1967. The cosmic dust detector registered 17 hits in a 15-minute span on the 15th of September, part of an apparent micrometeoroid shower which temporarily changed the spacecraft attitude and slightly damaged the thermal shield. The spacecraft systems were reactivated in October 1967 for an attitude control test in support of the Mariner 5 mission. 
On the 7th of December, the gas supply in the attitude control system was exhausted, and on December 10th and 11th, a total of 83 micrometeoroid hits were recorded, which caused perturbation of the attitude and degradation of the signal strength. On the 21st of December, 1967, communications with Mariner 4 were terminated. This upcoming video is courtesy of NASA Jet Propulsion's Laboratory. It's 1965. A gallon of gas costs 31 cents. Goldfinger was the year's top movie. The Beatles album A Hard Day's Night won a Grammy. And Mariner 4 became the world's first successful mission to Mars. Here are five things you probably didn't know about it. Mariner 4 was the first spacecraft to navigate using the stars, like ancient mariners that sailed the seas. Mariner 4 went farther than any other human-made object at the time, and used the bright star Canopus as a reference. Once its star sensor found Canopus, gas jets on the spacecraft kept the vehicle locked in the correct orientation for the trip to the Red Planet. Mariner 4 reached Mars on July 14, 1965, and took 22 pictures as it flew by. They were the first pictures ever taken of another planet from deep space. The pictures showed moon-like craters, shattering the idea of finding life on the surface, but opening the age of scientific Mars exploration. Mariner 4 carried an analog television camera, the best technology at the time. The pictures were sent back digitally as ones and zeros. While waiting for early computers to process the data, engineers anxious to see a picture created their own by hand coloring printouts, paint by number style. It was the first digital image of Mars from space. Radio dishes on Earth picked up Mariner 4's data at just eight and a half bits per second, an amazing feat at the time, given the large distances involved. It took a week to send the 22 images back to Earth. Today, the Curiosity rover sends data almost 250,000 times faster than Mariner 4. Mariner 4 also discovered that Mars has a very thin atmosphere. This discovery was made by the spacecraft sending radio signals through the Martian atmosphere as it passed behind the planet. This first ever visit to Mars was a boost for the United States in the midst of the Cold War with the Soviet Union. President Lyndon Johnson passed out medals to NASA and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory for the success of Mariner 4. A lot has changed since Mariner 4. Back then, a typical engineer wore a white shirt, pencil tie, and often a pocket protector. Today, not so much. A half century may have passed, but the nation's pride in Mars exploration remains. Mariner 4 set the stage for future missions that flew to Mercury, Venus, Mars, and even the outer planets. Now that you saw the video, how did this change the world, you ask? Due to the Mariner 4 success, it laid way to the rest of the Mariner missions and other future spacecraft. Mariner 5 was originally built to be the backup for Mariner 4, but was never needed for that purpose. Thus, it was refurbished and modified to go to Venus. Mariners 6 and 7 were identical teammates in a two spacecraft mission to Mars. They transmitted to Earth a total of 143 pictures of Mars as they approached the planet. Mariner 8 was intended to go into Mars orbit and return images and data. Mariner 8 was launched, but the upper stage began to oscillate in pitch and tumbled out of control. Mariner 9 went to Mars and was the first to orbit another planet. Mariner 10 was the seventh successful launch in the Mariner series, and the first spacecraft mission to visit two planets, Venus and Mercury. personnel that overviewed the Mariner 4 project was Mr. Jack N. James as the project manager, Mr. Glenn A. Reef as the program manager, and Dr. R. K. Sloan as the project scientist. All these great minds came together to build the Mariner 4.